starting this again because I uh, need to do some more research on my passengers. Anyway, I'm in a car and we're doing this with Andrea Gruenwald. Yay! I got it. Awesome. Um, I've known you for probably seven years. I don't believe I got that wrong. Anyway, uh, we're doing this. Thank you for doing it. Hey, you're welcome. Um, it's been a long time coming. Yeah. I'm looking forward Talked to this one. for a while. Yeah, I'm really excited. Um, and Andrea runs a five-star relationship CEO, five-star relationships in town, executive coach and counseling and yeah. just... Uh, all around awesome person, rotarian, golfer, mom, you name it. So, um, can you give us a quick little background where, where you've come from, what you're up to these days before we get into it? Yeah, so my background is psychology, and I became a therapist, started a, my own private practice uh, about tw 20 years ago. And uh, boom! Worked, yeah, boom, it, just like that, snap, it's over. Uh, worked at the university for five years of that time, and um, the university. Where's that? The University of Guelph. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Thought there was just like the, the university. university, the university in our city. Gotcha. And um, yeah, so been coaching as well. I started that about ten years ago, mm -hmm. and grew the company. It was myself, obviously, starting out, and uh, hired one person maybe three to five years ago, and now we're a team of four. Cool, so, and growing. And growing. Like, yeah, I need to make another hire, actually. Yeah, awesome. So, um, today is Plaid for Dad Day. I don't know if you yeah. can tell because of the lighting, but this is Plaid. It's for prostate cancer. And it's That's also awesome. Tim Horton's... Camp Day. Camp Day. So, in in celebration of, of these two days, I'm wearing Plaid, and we're going to Tim Horton's Day. Absolutely. Coffee. We're going to help the kids. We're helping the kids go helping to camp. Helping the kids. Cool. Uh, all right. So, you are in a very cool position when it comes to working with leaders of all types. Exactly. And one of the things I thought we could jump into was around this idea of like what makes a great leader and what are some of the common, you know, symptoms or issues that you experience when yeah. someone says, Andrea, I need some help with my team. Yeah. My people don't get it. When yeah. really it's probably not that and it's usually a bit more of a mirror thing than it is an external thing. Um, but I figured it'd be really neat because you're in such a cool position to be able to provide some insight on like, yeah. here are the most common things that you see when yeah. you're entering into an executive coach relationship or a leadership relationship with some maybe things that are happening that might not be serving uh, the leader and or the team or the company well. Yeah, so there's five metrics that make a, a good leader that's going to um, help propel your organization forward. Uh, their leadership, so how if, if the person really likes to lead, be in control, be in charge. There's focus, which is about drive. Um, there's positively engaging. They like people. They like to be around people. Um, those are going to be your team building um, people. Uh, thinking outside the box, you know, in, in the, the marketplace and, and uh, corporate space today, you need to be able to think outside the box and think creatively and come up with unique situations. And then um, the one that I probably talk about most is emotional intelligence. And that is uh, knowing yourself and knowing others and being able to, to do that. So you know, that leadership is a whole combination of those. Some some leaders are high on some of them and low on others and, you know, low, low in the ones that others are high in, etc. Right. Um, so, uh, you know, in my experience and, I, you know, working with uh, organizations that are, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars or three million dollars or or smaller, the biggest thing that I think um, can really help a leader is self-awareness. Cool. And it's the thing that I find that people think they have self-awareness, <laughs> but they don't. I was just about to say yeah. that. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah I, mean, I know uh, myself. I, I work too much. Yeah, yeah. That's my self-awareness. Yeah. I don't like to fail. I work too hard. Yeah. You know, it's yeah, like yeah, the yeah, interview exactly. questions. Yeah. Um, so I think that the self-awareness is really, it, it's really critical. And um, that's where coaching comes in. I'll, I'll tell you... Um, a funny example of that. A story. A, a story. Nice, I know how you like stories. Nice. Uh, very, it, it, so ironic. It's it's unbelievable. But um, I was working for this organization in Toronto. I was helping them with some strategic hires. They were facing some challenges in the um, in their specific business space, and so I was helping them, you know, with some critical hires so they could they could navigate this next phase of business for themselves. Yeah. And so I was helping doing some coaching with their top, 
the sea level team plus some, some others. Yep. And I was meeting with the director of HR and I, I, I use a, a performance metric. I think we've talked about before called Taze. Anyway, I, I had used that. I like it because it's research based. I'd gone through this process with the HR uh, director and I said to her, you know, based on what I'm seeing here, I think your biggest challenge will be when you're in a situation where um, there's something that happens that you disagree with or that's frustrating for you, you're going to show your negative emotion. You're going to get frustrated right. and that's not going to work for you. And she said, oh, absolutely not. That's not the case. <laughs> that happens sometimes at home, but I'm very professional. Never happens, never happens professionally. And I said, okay, great. That's fantastic. <laughs> so then we, it, within thank the you week, for lying thank you. Me. Yeah. I don't believe you, but okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So that okay. same, good. yeah, good, <laughs> perfect. Um, so that same week we were in a meeting and someone, the exact scenario played out where someone said something she didn't like, she got frustrated and she blew up. And I was sitting in my chair saying, uh, this just happened, you know? And what we're talking about, <laughs> that's what this is. Yeah. So she blew up. Yeah. Obviously, everybody was very happy with what she did. They were very excited about her response. Well, the problem was it alienated a customer, a client. And, you know, so these, these mistakes, it's um, important to know we all make mistakes. We all have weaknesses. We've talked to, you know, you and I have talked about my weaknesses. I don't know if we've talked about your weaknesses. I'm about, well. to, I'm about, to, I'm about to get into it, actually, because this one kind of yeah. tone for me. Yeah. So... It's really, I can't stress. I'm not sure we talked about I'm not sure. you. You, so what's your weakest thing? We'll get thing? to there in a second. <laughs> Can we help the people though, yeah. that, that might have uh, rang true for them. Yeah. You know, they might get frustrated in a, in a setting or they might okay. be working with somebody that does get frustrated yeah. in a setting. What does someone do, A, for themselves, yeah. to figure out how to show up the way they want to show up, and B, for, them, for, for themselves as well, if someone else is showing up like a bat at hell? Yeah, so there's different, different levels of what I would call intervention. So on a, on a fairly light intervention, it's, it's recognizing, getting in touch with your own feelings and recognizing when that feeling starts to hit your gut, like you start to feel like, oh, what I don't like this. Oh, I don't like this, you know? <laughs> and it's at a low two out of, th or three out of 10, then you take a break. You count, you go to the washroom, you gain perspective. Um, if you want to go a bit deeper, then you, you try to find out what the trigger is that's creating that anxiety or that fear response and, um, and try to think of another way to think about it. And usually if someone is getting triggered and blowing up or being too aggressive, it's from a fear or anxiety response to some thought they've had which is usually from the past, which is, for example, they're not listening to me, someone's trying to take advantage of me, um, why are people depending on me all the time, why can't they just figure it out? Yeah. Um, ding, 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 ding. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. Um, <laughs> and it's possibly that could be something for you, Rob, but, and. Oh, I have journals out yeah, thoroughly, and yeah. that's exactly what it is. And I, you know, it's, it's not uncommon. I'm working with another organization of Oakville and, and similar thing. It's, it's the HR director again, um, where, where that's what we identified for her. And now that she knows that she can, you know, calm herself and realize, okay, I grew up without help or assistance. Right. And, but other people did. And so I just need to help be more empowering and instead of getting triggered myself, need to ask them questions so they can figure it out. It's awesome, right? And, yeah. and so I, I'm, before I ask the question about tactically, how do okay. you figure that out? Okay. Um, it's really interesting and in, 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 uh, over the course of years I've, I've been exposed to this idea that you know, more than 90% of our stress comes from a gap between the standards we hold for ourselves and the expectations we put on other people with right. those standards. Yeah. So this idea that this is the way the world works in my brain, yeah. this is the way I see the right. world and the way I show up in the world, yeah. therefore other people should be showing up in the same way, right. should yeah. be showing up in the same way, and when they don't, we get stressed about it. Yeah. Like, why don't you take this seriously? Why aren't you listening? Mm -hmm. This is, you know, figured out yourself, whatever that might yeah. be. And, and so then, 
which has been really helpful just being aware of that idea. Yeah. Um, but then going back to it tactically, so, you know, you, you're, you're aware that you might be triggered and being getting frustrated in mm-hmm. front of people. Mm-hmm. And then you experience it yourself as yeah. an individual, and you're like, oh, I'm doing that. Right. This is what we talked about. It's happening. Mm-hmm. How do you figure it out? Right. The way you figure it out is you pay attention. You start to make <laughs> like a, say, a connection. You, you pay me. Yeah, you pay me, <laughs> and I help you, and I identify it quickly so you don't have to spend two years doing right. it. Um, or you can pay attention to your body, and when you start to see or feel that gut reaction of anxiety or fear... Um, you know, anger is usually what we call a secondary emotion. So, so often people express anger because that's, uh, uh, an emotion they're more comfortable with, you know, uh, than expressing vulnerability. Right. But you pay attention to what it is and what situations are triggering for you and triggering that anxiety or that fear. And, and you, again, pay attention to what is the thought that happens at that time. Right. I'll give another example. So I was working with a woman who uh, was in a situation where there was a guy just handing out some water bottles to a group of people standing there, of which she was one. Right. And he handed out water bottles to every water to every person except her. Oh. And horrible. Like, because of her past, right. you know, that nobody pays attention to me or no one likes me uh, or I'm not important, it triggered that, it, you know reaction in her that that upsetness that that feeling of abandonment or or um, rejection right and she flipped out and started yelling at the guy and he was just like oh like I just didn't see you like yeah. I just you know but that's what happens no one yeah. ever sees me <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> yeah. yeah so it's like you know we project that onto situations when we get triggered and once you can identify what that link is it gives you power to be more self-aware and to take control and manage the situations that you're in and to prepare yourself for that very situation. Right. You know? That's All right. cool. So we just dropped off one of these candy kebabs for, for Vanessa McQuaid and, yeah. and Harrison McQuaid so they can yes. enjoy some candy today. I'm suspicious as to whether Harrison's going to get it. Yeah. <laughs> I am also suspicious. Uh, okay. So we were talking about Taze. Yes. And you mentioned it earlier. Um, as like a performance metric yeah. um, kind of tool. Yeah. So what the heck is TASE and why do you use it? Yeah, so TASE is a, it stands for the Attentional and Interpersonal Style Assessment. The reason I like to use mouthful. it, I know it's a mouthful. The reason I like to use it is it's research-based and it's performance-based. So what it does is it takes those five metrics that I talked about before, the leadership, the focus, the uh, positively engaging, thinking outside the box, and emotional intelligence, and uh, takes those five areas and it looks at attention research, and it, it identifies what your attentional style is, compares it to those metrics, as well as some intra-personal characteristics, like right. introversion, extroversion, how you express emotion, those kinds of things, yep. um, energy, a whole bunch of other things. And then it says, these are the areas you're going to be strong in as you go about your, whatever your job is. Right. And these are the things that you're, you're going to, when you make a mistake, how often you make a mistake and what mistake is it going to be? Is it going to be, um, you know, getting distracted? Is it going to be too much drive, too controlling? Showing up frustrated. Showing up. Yeah, exactly. Um, and so this is the yeah. tool you used with the HR professional yes. that you were referring to right yeah. here? I use that tool a lot. I pro- it's probably like 80, 20, Taze and Bergman. Cool. Yeah. Uh, all right. So thanks for, and so Taze, if anyone wants to check it out, they yeah. can obviously Google it. And then if they want to get yeah. involved, they can call you and then you can, you can run them through Yeah. The and on my website that Intrigue did, um, Ooh, thank you for five the star relationships.com. <laughs> nice. uh, they did a great job. Uh, there's a description on there of the Taze and what it does. And uh, I think there's even maybe some stories of people that have used it. And some okay, endorsements. Cool. Yeah. So you people understand kind of the impact it has. Yeah. All right. So switching gears, no pun intended, because this is a manual <laughs> stick shift. Um, you, we've, we've been working together kind of like in a coaching yep. type of relationship. And uh, we've been building some foundations for five-star relationships. And we've, we've gone into 
talking about professional sales at, mm-hmm. at some capacity. Mm-hmm. And do you remember at the beginning when I asked you um, how would you define or describe a salesperson, the yeah. types of things you said? Yeah, it's sort of the, you know, for me, the thing that came up, and I, I don't know if I would have thought about this on my own, but when we talked about it, it was like, you know, the shoe salesman or the pushy salesperson. The door-to-door encyclopedia. You know, door-to-door, like that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, people that are pushy and aggressive and are trying to are trying to oversell, you know? That's right. what came to my mind. Right, cool. So, I mean, and, and who wants to be that, right? Right. Who wants, and, when, yeah. and we were talking about getting, you know, growing the business and getting yeah. a bit more involved in the professional sales yeah. side of things. Yeah. And so, um, we had to work through this idea because when we talked about you being a salesperson, mm-hmm. I think the words you used uh, was bleh or something. To, <laughs> it, something I like think boogers. it was highly academic. <laughs> oh, come on now. <laughs> That's terrible. That is terrible. Uh, and and so it was just interesting from my perspective working with you yeah. on, on that idea yeah. for quite some time. Yeah. Um, to it, it was like inception because mm-hmm. When it comes to counseling and executive coaching and the process that you're using with your clients to help them self-discover their own, you know, triggers and thoughts and that kind of stuff, um, was it was it was just I'm not sure how to put words to it, but you being conscious of the stuff that you know yeah, yeah. and conscious of the trash or yeah. whatever it is, yeah. um, and and working through it, I just thought it was really neat because uh, everybody's got stuff. Exactly. And I think sometimes maybe I've been guilty of this in the past where I've been like, no, no, I've right. got all my stuff right, yeah. figured out. Nothing nothing yeah. bothers me. Uh, but I think it's kind of like the magic's in the process, not the destination. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if there's any comment you have around, you know, self-learning yeah. and self-discovery, even for you. Well, I think it's important. You know, I, it's, it's what we talked about, self-awareness. You think that you know yourself. And, you know, I mean, I've been in this field <clears throat> for just several decades and uh, you know I started I started a long time ago in psychology so it's not that I don't know that information but to do the process of figuring out what you're thinking and you're responding it's very helpful to have an objective person and to ask you questions and help you sort of think and probe in your own psyche and your own head and um, yeah it's like through that process recognizing I already knew I didn't like to to be vulnerable and and expose myself to rejection or right. possible rejection that I, I already knew that but sort of understanding how that plays out in a sales role um, you know because I would call people and I would literally be like uh, like totally different than my personality which is like um, this is <laughs> and I'm prob- probably I can't help you, but I just thought I'd call in the off chance. Like it just was. Rob told me Rob I had to call said somebody. I had to call five people. <laughs> you know, so and realizing, you know, I, that I too I need to look at factual information. So when anxiety and fear get triggered and those thoughts come to my head, like I'm not good enough or whatever those thoughts are, you know, that I need to look at the facts the same thing I tell all the coaching people and my clients you know that I to look at the facts and you know when I look at the facts and I say every every client I've had corporate client I've had I've had repeat business from you know and everyone who's given me a a, a Google review so far has given me five out of five five stars five stars yeah five star relationships five star that's yeah 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 love it so it's it's how someone else giving you that prompt to spend that time and you know, another thing we talked about is journaling which I, I tell people all the time like you need to journal you need to externalize these things you need to spend time reflecting I don't like to do that I don't like to I like to be busy all the time and doing stuff so it's like pushing yourself to do these things to reflect and and um, kind of uncover things that you don't uncover in your day-to-day life you yeah know? that's cool yeah so if there was one tip uh, you could give, like generally speaking, that would generally apply to everybody when it comes to leadership yeah. and leading an organization, what would that one tip? What would that one tip be? I I think that one tip would be take the next step. You know, it's it's whatever wherever you're at, take the next step, and love and accept yourself where you are. There's no problem with where you are. 
And if you can be accepting of yourself and love yourself, then you're not going to shame yourself. You're not going to, um, from self, uh, low self-esteem or low self-confidence, overcompensate by being that person who's, you know, I'm here now. I know everything. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and take the time to reflect and, and, and discover whether it's through a coaching process or maybe there's another process you've discovered. Um, to, to identify what the next step is for you in your in your leadership development and figure out how to take it. That's cool. So, I mean, like, the, the common theme with there is just, like, don't stop learning. Yeah. It's like, and specifically what's next for you? Inside yeah. first. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool.